welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at um, an example of the usefulness of a normal subgroup and also what a normal subgroup is in um, a very practical way. So we know that when we work with modular arithmetic, such like z mod 5z, and we're modding out by something, and we think we've chunked up the integers, partitioned them into distinct places, 0 bar, 1 bar, 2 bar, 3 bar, and 4 bar, a nice property of um, modular arithmetic here is that the bars split over addition and multiplication. Um, particularly this thing about addition here, because that um, this is an additive group, and we're functioning out by um, an additive subgroup here, multiplication by. So, for instance, if I take you know, like something like um, two plus four bar, I could think of that as being two bar plus four bar if I wanted to. Um, so, if you notice how there is a well-defined operation between chunks here, and um, back and forth from here to here, meaning that I can actually replace um, this with a different representative, like 4 bar. Maybe I can use negative 1 bar, for instance. Um, so then after I change the representative, I can throw it back together and get 2 minus 1. And notice that that's equal to 1 bar. Of course, this is 6. 6 bar is equal to 1 bar. 6 is 1 more than 1. So you have that nice equality going on. Essentially, bars can split across the operation, and the operation is well defined um, between the different chunks. And I can change the representative when I split, and then I can put it back together. You can always do that. Why? Well, I mean, this is what we expect in modular arithmetic. Um, this is behaving normally, this subgroup. That's how we want it to behave. The splitting of bars across the operation. So that's normal behavior. If we call 5z a normal subgroup, anything that will do that we'll call normal. Not all subgroups um, uh, of a group are necessarily normal. Now if the group is commutative, like the integers are, then it will be. Every subgroup actually is normal. But when we're working with permutation groups, um, things that have, um, such as like uh, SN or some N or subgroups of that, often and oftentimes things are not commutative. And when things are not commutative, uh, there's not a guarantee that the groups will be complete, will behave normally that way. Well, in this little video, we're just going to look at an example of how this could be useful um, for a particular normal subgroup of D18. Okay, um, where D18 is a dihedral group of order 18. Um, so it has 18 elements in it. You can think nine um, rotation, little symmetries, and then a flipping that, um, uh, uh, mechanism on top of that, giving you 18 different symmetries. All right, so let's take a look here see what we can do um, with thinking of how that would work. So we haven't really talked exactly about what makes a subgroup normal, other than the fact that it just works with splitting. I mean, not all subgroups work this way, but this is an example of what it does. So let's just look at this example um, and see what happens with it. Okay, so um, if we take D18 and we look at the quotient H, there's actually different um, chunks that it splits it into. And here is a representation of the different chunks listed out. It's kind of like multiple choice. So what if we had something like this? Can we reduce this to one of these? Now, we can using the idea that it is normal. The bars will split. So we can go S equals 1 of R43 
bars split nicely. Now looking at that um, we can reduce these representatives here thinking um, okay uh, first of all um, so this subgroup subgroup uh, H you see this R3 right here um, in particular uh, our exponents over R will behave mod 3 because we're modding out by this whole subgroup so um, r to the third is basically like zero here um, if we mod out. So so uh, so for the exponents over r, um, we get the multiple of three. So 42 is a multiple of three, which means that 43 is like basically an exponent of one. So you could reduce this to just r. Um, that's kind of nice. This one right here, this is like r to the negative one because it's one less than a multiple of three. Now, this right here, this is an even exponent. Now, s itself, as a reflection, um, s squared, is just always equal to the identity anyway. And so, really, um, even without the bar, I mean, this right here is just the identity. So, um, so really, this r and that r inverse r together, they actually just cancel out. Okay, so that's gone. So, really, we're just left with this guy. Since this is an odd exponent, we're just going to be left with s bar. Ah, we got it. So this whole thing right here is just s bar. Notice the utility and then, um, of it being a normal subgroup. It's just like we can reduce things, like we can do that with modular arithmetic. Um, even in a group that's not commutative, where um, order matters of the operation, we can still do something like this to reduce a mod. Um, and that's because of normality. It's the thing that normal with it. Okay, now um, there is a description of, of how we know if a group is, is normal. Um, and that is, I mean, there's a few different ways of saying it. Um, one is, is that the collection of, um, well, how can we even talk about bars here in this quotient at all? Um, because we haven't specified, I mean, in this notation, we're not even specifying if we're talking about, talking about left cosets or right cosets. Because normally when you have a chunk here, in a quotient like this, you're talking about a coset. Like, you know, like G, H would be a group operation between them. Or H, G, right? Well, um, actually, these are the same. So... This is one way of saying that the group behaves normally. This condition is required, actually, in order for um, an operation to be well-defined on the chunks in this way, um, because you need that, that a left coset to be equal to, each left coset to be equal to its companion right coset with the same um, coset representative. Um, uh, equivalently, you could say that actually the collection of left cosets is the exact same as the collection of right cosets. So it doesn't matter which one you're talking about. Um, now, of course, for commutative groups, that works all the time. Um, but for non-commutative groups, it doesn't. But when it does, then we can actually get this um, operation preservation and we can split across the bars. Thanks for watching.